Hello, this is a quick Star Citizen 3.14 power capacitor and weapons guide, looking at what's new and what you need to know, with time codes below so you can skip to anything in particular that you want. Power and capacitor changes, so weapons and systems overheating is something that's not really a problem in Star Citizen 3.14. Power allocation and capacitors are the much more active limiting factors. Capacitors have a shared pool of energy that your ship makes use of. There is a shared power pool for energy weapons. The less energy weapons, or um, if you turn some of your energy weapons off, the more ammo capacity there is for the remaining energy weapons. Energy weapons recharge after not firing for a brief time. Ballistics do not make use of that power at all. You can't yet change the capacitor on your ship, but the ship that you have and the amount, size, and type of energy weapons will affect the ammo capacity that each of them then has. Man turrets have their own isolated weapon capacitor system, which will regenerate weapons faster and provide a deeper pool for ammo capacity. Man turrets are very effective now. Power allocation and the power triangle are much more of a direct effect on your ship's systems now. You can adjust the power of your ship in a couple of ways. Via the MFD, the multi-function display, literally just moving the power indicator towards the system that you want. Or you can use the F keys, F5, more to weapons, F6 puts more power to engines, F7 more to shields, F8 resets everything to default. You can hold down a given key, F5, 6 or 7, uh, to max the power to that system. If you put power to weapons, this only affects energy weapons and increases their ammo capacity and their regen rates for ammo. Maxing out that system can see a 20% more capacity for that ammo and can halve the recharge time for energy ammo. Putting more power to engines will have the boost um, that you have for your ship regenerating faster and boost being more efficient so it costs less fuel to use. Using thrust will give you more thrust on a certain axis based on your ship type. If you put max power to engines you will have around a 2.5 to 3 times faster regen for that boost and um, your booster fuel is around a third more efficient though mileage is going to vary um, on different ships. Putting more power to shields, this will have your shields soaking more damage and regening faster. So max power to shields gives you around a 33% more health bonus and regen times drop to about 33% of what they were. So that's actually quite a significant improvement for both of those. You can and should change these power allocations on the fly during combat. Practice will go a huge way of getting used to that system so it might be that you're like oh this is a huge difference compared to what i'm used to with star citizen well it might be play a load in arena commander and mess around in the uh, verse load you'll get used to it pretty quick there are more complex key bindings that you can use to set power um sort of like um no power to engines but then distribute all the other power to to weapons and shields bam um so there's there's some more complex key bindings you can set if you want to if you take away all the power allocated to a system and there is a no power allocated to it whatsoever that system will not recharge so engines won't recharge boost shields won't recharge weapons energy weapons at least won't recharge the energy ammo Let's take a look at weapons changes. Missiles are powerful mid-range weapons for use in dogfights or against larger ships. In a single-seater fighter, when you're in missile operator mode, you're going to lose control of your other weapons. It's just missiles that you have selected. To go into missile operator mode, it's middle mouse, and then you'll want to lock a target. Once you've locked a target, you'll begin getting a missile lock, so locking a target's T. You'll wait for the missile to lock. Once it's got minimum lock, then you can press left click and it will fire that missile at that target. Now, that's just with the left click. Pew! You can wait longer to uh, get a better lock on the target. Um, that will make that missile harder to counter. And you can choose to fire a burst of missiles by pressing G to add missiles to your burst. And then Alt G will reset uh, that burst of missiles to one or whatever default is, but typically one. You can fire before your missile has a lock, but the missile has to be armed. You can see if it's armed on the bottom right of your HUD. The missile will fire straight forward. It will dumb fire if it's not got a proper lock. You can choose or cycle which missiles you've got selected in missile operator mode by pressing mouse 2. If you have other types, it will switch between them. Launching lots of countermeasures will help spoof missiles. The appropriate ones for the missiles that are being used against you will be more effective. At time of recording, flares, which are IR, um, infrared, and um, heat-based um, countermeasures weren't working, but chaff, noise fields, are working just fine, and they'll work very well against both CS missiles and 
EM missiles, but to a, a good extent against um, IR and, uh, and heat-based missiles as well. For typical dogfights and conventional weapons range, this is geared around 1.2 kilometers now. That's a sort of rough sort of distance you can expect to be fighting with other fighters. Energy repeaters, size 4 and below, are now focused dogfighting and anti-fighter weapons, energy cannons, and larger energy repeaters are more anti-large ship now. But that doesn't mean that you can't use them for dogfighting, that just means that they're not as suited, or at least they, when they've been balancing them, they haven't made them as suitable for fighting um, fighters but um, you can still get some great shots on heavy fighters and things like that with them for sure. Um, ballistic weapons are specialist with high damage and extremely low ammo. You will be using much more energy weapons than you previously had. They also have good shield penetration ballistic weapons directly impacting the ship sometimes which scales up as a shield has taken more damage. They are great to use in arena commander where you can get ammo refills as power-ups. When you use them at the right times whether you're in arena commander or in star citizen the verse um, it you can rip a ship apart with them. I mean, they are, they are super, super powerful. Huge amounts of damage, but you just run out of ammo almost immediately. And they're going to require regular expensive rearming. They are not affected by power distribution, though, and other energy weapons won't have to share their energy pools with them. Other weapons, like scatterguns and disruptors, are much more specialised weapons now. High reward for very close-range scatterguns is the idea here. The major changes here, though, being to energy weapons, which are much more of a focus for this meta, and ballistic weapons sort of mixed in there occasionally to give you huge amounts of DPS. A couple of notes uh, for ships and ship systems. Currently, all shields are standardised for each size, so all size 1 shields are exactly the same, no variant differences. As of recording, it's uh, 1500 HP for size 1 shields, which small fighters and small ships have, uh, 7500 HP for size 2 shields, which typically heavy fighters and ships that are maybe a little bit bigger than that, but have like a, a single manned turret, um, but they're not huge. And then um, it's 100,000 health uh, for size 3 shields, which are typically larger multi-crew ships. It doesn't have to be a massive multi-crew ship, a constellation, for example, size 3 shield. You'll see lots of ships have multiple shields though, which obviously then share their health pools. There is a lot more balance coming later this year beyond the 3.14 patch cycle, and variants will return for all of these systems. As heat isn't much of an issue at the moment either, you don't really need to worry too much about coolers currently in the other systems in my opinion. The only real customization that I would think that you might want to do is weapons and quantum drive. With quantum drive still having a vast difference at the sort of distance uh, and speed that you travel uh, and the amount of quantum fuel that you use. Multi cruise ships with turrets are both tough and effective in game now and it's no longer always the case that multiple people in multiple fighters are a better option than a multi cruise ship. All ship handlings have been reworked with roles for ships being more obvious, tuning them into light, medium, heavy and interdictor fighters as well as sort of like um, larger ships. Uh, so light fighters are fast, agile but have low HP, medium are good all-rounders, heavy have more health than lots of pew pew, can have man turrets but suffer from lower agility and have larger shields. Interdictors are more sort of geared towards trying to get to a place as quickly as possible, intercepting another ship is the idea, so boost will make them sort of accelerate forwards much more than other ships. Other larger ships have a lot more health now and are sort of um, individually tuned uh, more appropriately to their size and whatever they're supposed to be doing. Boom! That's it for today's guide. I hope that allows you to hit the ground running when it comes to Alpha 3.14 and the power and combat changes. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you're looking for other Star Citizen news or guides, please check out the rest of my channel because th that's what I do here. I cover Star Citizen in all its forms. So take a look. Hey, I heard you like VPNs. How about NordVPN then? It's got things like security and features. And we all know chicks dig VPNs. Oh my god, is that Nord? Well, yes. Yes, it is. Wink. Check out the links below to get discounts or go to nordvpn.com forward slash board gamer. Maybe it will align your shackles or something. Actually, let's read some testimonials. Ever since I got NordVPN, my life is good. I wish I'd got NordVPN sooner. I didn't get NordVPN and now I've got no hands. I'm sorry that I recorded this as an ad sin. I, I apologize to my editor.
I said I wouldn't go too wacky. That's that's not what's happened here. Every month we have a ship giveaway, and for July it's for a Constellation Taurus with lifetime insurance and a Star Citizen game package. All you need to play this long overdue, more cargo focused version of the Constellation is going to be flyable in July. It's basically a new ship. Woo! sort of uh, to be in for a chance of winning that comment on any of my videos made during july and each video gives you another chance to win but only one comment is counted per video more details down below please also consider supporting the channel further via the youtube join button or via patreon or donation or whatever it all helps us make star citizen content great star citizen content hopefully or at least some star citizen content also you should bother the bell and like and subscribe and all that sort of jazz as well thanks for watching